No, that's not quite correct, but my learned friend repeatedly says this. But every member of the Legislative Assembly and of Parliament is ex officio yes, yes. member of the Pratinidhi yes, Sabha. Yes, that's correct. We are also part of that. That's right. No doubt. Else, that's all that's all right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There, there is a no there. No dispute. The 39 members of the Legislative Party are also members of the party. No yeah. dispute. No question about it. No, no. How am I? I am not said anything they contrary. They have to have primary membership. Yes, yes, yes. I have not said anything against them. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Only thing is that 39 members can't hijack the party. That's all. That we'll see. That that's the issue. <laughs> of course, we we welcome you. Majority of the house. Yes. Is it what you are trying to? You. This is your emphasis. Yes. At here. Yes. Also, the references to the majority of In the, the house. house. And goes on to say, particularly the following members of the party. That's correct. Because mm -hmm. what is party means? The legislature party. For simple, just what uh, yes. uh, on yes. your submission, that as per the interim order dated 29 June, correct, all subsequent proceedings are subject to ultimate. Yes, yes. yes. Now see, uh, actually we have to consider that on 29 you challenge uh, the trust vote to be held on 30th June. Yes. Correct. You challenge that only. That's on correct. 29th. That's correct. Correct. Now see the order, interim order, which is passed by this court on 29th. Right. See, please read it. Yes, I agree. That. So as well as read petitions referred to above. Okay, but what? Uh, what? Read petitions referred to above is that. What was the subject to ultimate outcome? The proceedings of the convening the meeting on 30th. Would I, I, I agree. Not all the subjects. Malaz, I, I, I don't dispute that. I am saying. I'm, the fact remains that on 30th June, for whatever reason. I, I had resigned earlier. Lordship is right. All. Your Lordship is absolutely right. So but Malaj, my your submission that all other sub as per the order dated 30th June, all other subsequent uh, will be. Sub Malaj, I I just asked myself a simple question: Had I not resigned, mm -hmm. had I not resigned, that trust vote would have happened, and I would have the same thing would have happened. Correct. 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 That, that, the that, same thing happened on the fourth. Take counsel. That, the same thing happened on the fourth. Provided, provided the meeting would have been convened on 30th. But the same thing happened on the 4th, the trust vote was happened on the 4th. And that is also subject to, the petition was filed, your Lordship said we will consider that, we, that will also be subject to. No, no, we were on your submission. Lordship is right. I mean, Technic technically, what my Lord is saying is absolutely right. I cannot have any two opinions, or, there can be no two opinions. But the fact is, in substance, it's the same thing. Whereas, yes, your Lordship is right. I mean, I can't get away from the facts. That he said, what's the point of going to the, these people are going to vote for him. That's exactly what happened on the 4th. That's why we challenged the 4th. That's also his, the writ petition is here. So, Manas, are we going into the technicality or are we going into the substance of the matter? Whether these 39 could have voted in favor despite the whip. There is a whip issued, Manas, on the 3rd. Whip is issued on the 3rd that you vote uh, against the trust vote. They did not. And who is the whip? Sunil Prabhu voted against the whip. So, Malaz, where does it take us? It doesn't take us anywhere. So, he votes against the whip and Malaz, Gogavale is then appointed. He can't be appointed by the speaker. And Gogavale, they have issued, speaker has issued notice to us. Those notices can't be issued. I can't be subject to any disqualification proceedings. And my, my notice has been given by the speaker to me to be disqualified. Your Lordship will strike it down on the facts. So, all these issues will have to be decided. Malaz, I'm sorry. Let me just broadly tell your Lordship, Mother, what we have to meet and what the issues are. Mother, I think that we seem to have been, we are somewhat uh, innocent of the manner in which people are represented in the House and who they, a legislator owes his duty to. Mother, your Lordship knows that under the 1950 Representation of People's Act, Mother, you have a delimitation commission. And in each state, a delimitation takes place and the territorial constituencies, Mother, are carved out. So the elections takes place with respect to those territorial constituencies in each state and the number is already Malaz, fixed. So Malaz, under the Representation of People's Act, first under the Constitution under Article 170, people are directly elected from the territorial constituencies. And Malaz, there is a process by which Malaz, they are elected. That process is also Malaz, elaborately set out in the conduct of election rules. First, there's a nomination that takes place. Malaz, the nomination takes place pursuant to your party nominating you and giving you the symbol on the basis of which you go to the returning officer and say, I am the nominee of the party and this is my symbol, which is, represents the party. After which, Malaz, the election takes place. And when the election takes place and the votes are counted, Malaz, 
The returning officer then gives you a certificate saying that you have been elected from this party. A copy of that is sent to the election commission. It's all set out here, so you'll watch it at the moment I'm just broadly. A copy of that is sent to the election commission and the election commission conveys that to the speaker of the assembly. What is it that I'm trying to say? The only identity of a legislator recognized in the house is that he is a member of the party. He has no other identity. Two members, three members, 20 members, 34 members can't have an identity outside of that. That's the basic constitutional concept question. Give your lordships an example. Well, let's forget about 34. A small party in Goa has five members. Two of them go to the speaker, to the governor and say, you know, I'm not going to support this government. And those two mullahs actually tilt the balance and the government can fall. So the governor will call a floor test. Sorry? Will the governor call a floor test? Forget majority. Even the minority cannot topple the government. If this is the procedure in law that we have to follow. We are back to IRAM, Gairam. Why? Because you say, now your political affiliation doesn't matter. What matters is numbers. Democracy is not about numbers. It is numbers within a constitutional framework. What the legislators, the speaker, the governor recognizes are political parties. And you are a member of a political party. Nothing less, nothing more. You have no other identity. And I tell your lordships why I'm saying this. How are governments formed? Sarkaria Commission, remember, Marat? Largest single party who has a majority on the floor of the house, the governor will call him to form the government, the leader to form the government. If that's not possible, comes the second. And that's political party now. Second, pre plural alliance of what? Of political parties. That's the second, if they form the majority. Three, post-poll coalition. What is the first? Single largest yes. political party. Second is pre-poll alliance of what? Of political parties. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three. Which is the third one? Third is post-poll coalition, which is what the Udav government was. Post-poll coalition of political parties. And the fourth is post-poll alliance of political parties. The governor, under Article 168 of the Constitution, is not a member of the Legislative Assembly, but he is part of the legislature. He can't recognize anybody other than political parties. That is the constitutional fundamental framework within which the House functions. That's why we did away with Gayaram, Ayaram. Lastly, the government is not part of the... Is part of the legislature but not a member of the Legislative Assembly. Of so he only recognizes, because he is part of the legislature, the political parties, the legislative parties. That means my identity is associated with my party in the House. I have no separate identity. Otherwise, mothers, 10 from one party, 2 from another party, 3 from another party will go to the governor and make the government fall. And then my learned friend's argument, see, the governor is fully satisfied that you have lost the confidence of the House. Because 10, 2, 2 and 3, along with the present dispensation, make the majority. So you back on Ayaram, Gayaram days. The whole purpose of the 10th schedule is to get rid of it. Numbers in the house will not make governments fall. It is the alliance of parties in the house that will make the government fall. And that's the application of mind of the governor when he decides to ask for a trust vote. See the havoc it will cause. All you need to do is to hook up numbers and they will say, Malads, on, on public platforms that it is a call of conscience, Malads. We know the extent of their conscience. And they'll go to the governor and say, see, we give you the numbers now. This is my letter to you. We are now the majority. This government, this chief minister has lost the confidence of the house. See the numbers. And it will be argued that, look, it's demonstrated that he doesn't have the majority and therefore hold a floor test. You see the consequences of this argument on the democratic polity of this country. That's one issue, Malas, I will deal with. I just want to point out. Number two, even more important, the, and, uh, which is something that I mentioned earlier also, and in detail, Malad, in my note, in which they did not comment on at all. All the council have not commented on the concept of the whip. In fact, I was really surprised when my learned colleague, Malad, Mr. Call, gave to your lordships a letter of Mr. Sanjay Raut. Your lordships will remember that. Saying, no, actually, it is the legislative, it is the leader of the house who appoints, it is the leader of the house who appoints the whip. Well, let's just kindly have a look at that letter. No, Sanjay Raut is a member of the Rajya Sabha, not a member of the Lok Sabha. He is appointing the leader in the Lok Sabha. And Malaz, I gave to your Lordship's chapter and verse, Erskine May, all the authorities, Malaz, as to how it is the political party that appoints the whip in the house. Paks Pramukh. And this, argue, this whole argument was jettisoned 
by showing this document saying, see, Eknath, uh, Sanjay Raut has appointed. He is not even one as a member of the Lok Sabha. He is empowered by the party. So this whole argument that I sat in Assam, appointed Gogavale as the whip. Where does that come from in constitutional terms? 34 of you sitting in Assam in the lap of the BJP will appoint Gogavale as the whip and then come to court and say, look, we've already removed you. Under what power? Sorry for interrupt. This may not be relevant for the... Sir, if you don't mind, sir, I, you know, rejoined? throughout... It, through, uh, if, sir, I mean, I, you know, I really, I really will appreciate. You people have... You, my colleagues have answered for five days. I have not uttered a word throughout. So please allow me to at least argue in my own way. Saturday, Sunday. So, but no, appointment of VP in Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha, will, it would never be over. Will you, we curtailed our arguments. In a rejoinder, my Lord, appointment of VP in Lok Sabha. Well, if you want, I can sit down and the court can decide. Since you are the master of the ceremonies here. So, Malaj, because that was an argument made, Malaj, because that justifies, what they say, that justifies the fact that Gugavle is the whip and he issued directions and he has to be obeyed. Malaj, till the fourth, who was the political party recognized in the, in the, in the assembly? Shif Sena, that was the political party. Who was the whip, Malaj? Sunil Prabhu. So, the second submission that I wish to make to your lordships is... First and second are more or less both men. Basically saying that uh, whips are actually appointed only by the political party. That's right. That's it's a simple point. That's simple, very simple point. It's appointed, so Malaj, the whip has to be obeyed. Sunil Prabhu had to be obeyed. On third, Sunil Prabhu issued a whip that you cannot vote for the BJP candidate as speaker. Whip was disobeyed. He cannot appoint himself as a leader because Ajay Chaudhary became the leader on the 21st of June itself when we removed Eknath Shinde. That removal of Eknath Shinde and the appointment of Ajay Chaudhary was conveyed to the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House recognized it. So how could the Governor call Eknath Shinde? Who is Eknath Shinde? I'm talking in constitutional terms. Argument is Eknath Shinde was the group leader. Where was the, under which law? Which group? You can't arrogate yourself the powers of the party sitting in Assam, being entertained by another party, publicly saying that another party is fully supporting me and changing the constitution of the house as if you are the political party. That's the second. Number three, my learned friend, my colleague, Mr. Kaul Malaj, argued that I am the party. He says, I am the party. I am the Shiv Sena. Malaj, on, on what constitutional basis can a member, then a People with 34 members say they are the Shiv Sena. Are they recognized by the election commission as the Shiv Sena? Shiv Sena is a registered political party with a political leadership, Malaj, intimated to the election commission under section 29A of the Representation of People's Act. The moment the recognition takes place under section 29A, that is the decision of the election commission, which is final. That decision was not overturned by anybody when all this happened till the 4th. Of July. So, Balaj, how can Eknath Shinde's group of 34 say, I am the political party? It has no constitutional basis. And for five days we have heard this, Balaj. I am not saying that I have split. I am not saying that I am the faction. I am saying I am Shiv Sena. So, if I say I am Shiv Sena, I am Shiv Sena in constitutional terms. Next point, Balaj, which is even more important. Balaj, your lordships will remember that under paragraph 3, of the 10th schedule, which was deleted later by the 91st Constitutional Amendment. The expression is that if there is a faction in the legislative party arising out of a split in the political party, and that faction represents one third of the legislative party, then that will be a valid defense against a disqualification petition. What it is. So what is the expression used there? I am a faction of the legislative party resulting from a split in the political party. Right, Malaj? Now, he says that we 34 are the political party. That's his case. He says, I'm not a faction. There's no split. But Malaz, when he goes to the election commission, what does paragraph 15 say? That if there are two factions of a political party who claim to be that political party, it doesn't use the word split, then the commission will decide which is that political party. So, before you, they say, I am the political party, 
and before the election commission they say i am a faction because if he is the political party he need not go to the election commission why is he going to the election commission he says there no difference between the legislative party and the political party which is which is malas a mockery of the 10th schedule itself where the whole purpose malas of differentiating was that members of the legislative party will not do acts which amount to voluntarily giving up membership of the party or vote against the uh, against the whip which will result in defection the whole purpose of the 10th schedule is to differentiate between the legislative party and the political party and the whole argument is there is no difference between the legislative party and the political party i am the political party but if you are the political party why did you move the election commission well, let's take for example three people out of five belonging to the congress party they are a majority they go to the governor of goa and say i am the political party we are the majority topple this government numbers are stacked against government will be toppled they will never go to the election commission why because there is the congress party outside what will the governor do